Welcome back. Thanks for coming back. We're going to look at lesson 13.1 in this video. We're going to be looking at Yelp reviews. The objective is that students will analyze Yelp reviews. Simple and sweet. Yelp reviews. As you probably are aware, Yelp is a review site where you can, you know, customers and people can leave reviews on businesses and restaurants and, and things. But they also make a data set available for learning for educational, personal educational and academic purposes. And um, so that's what we're going to use. It actually has a lot more data than I have available for this lesson and for um, homework. They have over 8 million reviews in this little data set. This is definitely not, obviously not all of Yelp's data, but within this data set, the data set itself was 4.4 gigabytes. I downloaded it and then wrote a little Python script to just pull out uh, reviews from 2018, the most recent year that the reviews were available. There, the reviews went from like 2006 all the way to 2018. And I just pulled out over 100,000 reviews uh, from Arizona written in 2018, just as a subset for us to work with, with this lesson and the homework. There you go, like I just said. And so the logic to parse through to analyze Yelp reviews is that it comes in a JSON format. Let me see if I were just to click on if I get a preview of it. So I don't want to double click. Well, let me see. It'll, it'll take a while to open. It's 83 megabytes. Even the small sample of reviews only from Arizona from 2018, over 100,000 reviews out of the like 8 million reviews that were available. Um, Okay. Um, still is 83 megabytes. This file, JSON file is 83 megabytes. It's a big file, even though it's just over, only over 100,000 reviews out of the much larger number that were available. Okay, there we go. So let's take a look, just so you can see what the JSON data uh, file looks like. So each row is a JSON object. So you can see, let me zoom in here. You can see on row one, we have a curly brace. I'll highlight it. Wow, it's really bogging down my computer. Um, there's a curly brace there. So that starts the JSON object there. And so you can see it has review ID. This is an ID for the actual review. This is the user ID and here's the business ID. And then the number of stars given, one out of five stars. And then um, there are some other things here useful, funny, cool. And then the actual review itself, the text that the person left wrote is right here uh, in text. And then you can see that um, apparently they were not happy. Um, anyway, big long review, pretty large, good. And then at the very end we have the date. And then line two is the next review. And again, the first review ends with a closing curly brace and the next review begins with an open curly brace, right? As JSON objects are prone to do. So the idea is that when, you're, when you parse through this file, you should parse through line by line. You should not parse through, you should not read in the whole file at once into your working memory of your computer because it's an 83 megabyte file. It's gonna really bog down, bog down your computer. A better way is to parse through line by line so you're only pulling in one line or one review at a time into the working memory and you're working with it and doing something with it um, one at a time. Okay, so anyway, this, this file, let's see if I jump to the very bottom of this file, what? Um, I think it's still parsing out. There are over 100,000 reviews um, in this file. I'm only seeing 80,000 lines right now, but uh, you know what, real quick, I could use this little tool. Let me, let me jump back into link 360. And if I were to do WC Yelp, yeah, there are 119,376 reviews lines, right? Each line is a review in this file. So almost 120,000 reviews in this JSON file. Okay, so you open a connection, like I said, and then you loop over that connection so that you're reading line by line in a for loop. All right, let me just jump back real quick to our lesson on 
file handling, file IO. As I mentioned way back here during week five, there are like there are four ways to deal with files, to read in files into a Python program. When you create a connection object, right, you save the connection uh, handle to a, a variable name, and then you call one of these methods on that hand that handle. The dot read, open close parentheses, reads in the whole file at once into memory, the memory of the computer, the working memory of the computer which like I said, with this big file, this 83 megabyte file, you don't want to do. It would really not be best unless you have a massively robust computer, which, you know, if you want to do it that way, go for it. But I think a better way is probably this third option where you actually use a for loop. And um, what you're doing, when you loop over a file connection variable object, you're looping over line by line. So I think that's probably, that's probably the best way with this file. All right, so let's jump back down to our lesson we're looking at in this video. <clears throat> so during each iteration of the for loop, you convert the JSON formatted string to a Python dictionary with the JSON.loads function, mind the S. That S means string, it's expecting a string which is what that for loop will give you, will give Python. And then, so you're looking at a, a, a Python dictionary that has a handful of keys and um, you use the keys as you need. For us, you know, the, the stars and the text will be the most important uh, for us here. But that's the logic, not too crazy and not too out of the ordinary from what we've seen in this class up to this point, right? We're seeing a lot of JSON because a lot of uh, websites use JSON formatted text these days for API requests and for data sets like this. And um, so we're getting good with JSON slash dictionaries, JSON objects that are converted into Python dictionaries in Python. Okay, so let's give it a try. Let's try this logic apply this logic to find the range of dates during which the reviews in the sample Arizona 2018 data set were written. Okay, so the first thing is you need to download the data set, this, uh, this one file, this JSON file called uh, Yelp az2018.json. Download it to your hard drive from the CMS. And like I said, it's an 83 and a half megabyte file. And with the most current um, reviews, uh, the most current data set as, as um, at the time of recording this video. Okay. And then you need to find the range of dates during which the reviews in the sample AZ uh, that data set are, were written. Okay. So just to give you a little bit of a, a clue here, what I would do, this is some other stuff. This is for later later thing um, to figure out what keys are available what you could do is say okay i want to know once i printed once i printed the um one second can't talk and type okay so i have a connection here right i save it to a variable fin file in i loop over that connection on line three which means I'm going to loop over lines. So review is going to hold one line. So then I say, hey, JSON, which I need to import JSON real quick. JSON, hey, JSON, I need your loads function with an S, which means I'm going to give you a string, a JSON formatted string, which review holds, right, at this point. And I'm just going to save it back to the same variable name review. And at this point, uh, after line four, review will actually be a dictionary. I mean, if we want to make this even more explicit to see what, what's actually happening here, we can do something like this for fun. Make it very explicit on what we're looking at in each of these steps. Okay, so then I just want to see what the keys are. I know that at this point you have a dictionary. What are the keys that you have? And we can do that. And this little exception right here, this raise exception was just to stop it after the first, just after one row. Um, so the keys are review, like I showed you um, over in the text editor, review ID, user ID, business ID, the number of stars, useful, funny, cool, and then the actual text and the date, okay? So that means that 
if we want to get to the date, right, we would index in or not index in, what's the word here? You just call the key date. That's the key name right there. So I want to see the value of this first review. And the, that the value of date, the key date, uh, associated with the key date in that first review, 2018, January 30. Right, I'll just let you know that they're not in order. Like, they're not in order by chronology. They're all kind of scrambled up in that file. So that's one review. Uh, that's the first reviews um, date. That is the first in the file. It's not the chronologically first. Okay, so anyway, anyway, I'm trying to point out that you may need to call this and figure out the the date. I just told you it's, it's called date. And then, um, so I will just stop there. I'm not gonna give you any more clues. I wanna see if you can use what we've learned in the past um, to see how you could get this answer. Find the range of dates during which the reviews in the sample data set were written. Ready, set, give it a shot. Pause the video. All right, let's take a look. Let's take a look at how we could do that. So what we do, this is what I just showed you a second ago, right? We import JSON, we open up file connection to that big 83 megabyte JSON file. Then on line four, I'm gonna create an empty list. That's a list, right? You can see those square brackets sitting there. This means this is a list. And then I'm gonna uh, loop over the file connection, which means that my variable, which I decided to name review, We'll hold lines, you know, each line one at a time as we're going through the for loop. I'm going to pass that review, uh, that string in, into the JSON.loads function. I'm going to save it back to the same variable name, but now it's a dictionary, like I mentioned a second ago, or a couple minutes ago, perhaps, depending on how long you took to work on this. And seven, I'm going to append it to this list. I'm going to append the current, excuse me, review date to the list. Okay, so when it's done going through the whole file, I should have almost 120,000 dates. I can just verify that for fun if I want and say, what's how many dates do you have in this list after you've gone through all of them? Um, it should print out the dates. I'll just comment out the rest for the moment, run the script. It'll take a few seconds to run through those 119,000 reviews. And yeah, I have as many, um, dates now in that list as there were lines in this in the file which makes perfect sense All right if we want to look at the first we can just look at the first 10 maybe i'll just index into the first 10 or so of this um, list of dates yeah there they are there's the first one there's the second one there's third good 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 okay so this is actually how you would um or one way there are many ways off, often many ways to do the same thing in programming. But after you get the dates, I just want to sort them. So I'm going to call the um, list method sort to sort the dates. These are actually strings. You can see the, the quotes around the actual dates. These are just strings. But the fact that they have year, month, day, and then hour, minute, second in that order which means that when I sort the strings, it'll go through and, and sort them in chronological order because they're ordered from the you know the biggest unit of time year down to the smallest unit of time seconds so so i'll just sort them this modifies in place this modifies in place right the uh, dot sort list method so there's no reason to save it back to a variable name in fact you should not it would mess things up if you do um, and then i just want to get the first thing so after i've sorted them the the first one chronologically should be the first one in the list now, right? So on line 10, I'll just grab that first element of the list with the index zero. And the last one in the list should be the last one chronologically. And so I'll just grab that one with the negative one index. Give me the last thing in the, the list. And I just print them out here. So let's run the whole script. It'll take a few seconds here to run. And there we go. So the first review was written on 2018, January 1st at 40 seconds, 46 seconds after midnight, apparently. 
And uh, the first, the last one that year in this data set, at least, was written on November 14th of that year. Okay. So that's how you can go about getting um, the range of when these reviews are written. If you want to pause the video and look at my screen, you can, or you can look at the solution file in the CMS. All right, let's try some more. Find the number of reviews written on Wednesdays and the number of reviews written on Saturdays. Hint, you're gonna need the time date module. The time date module has, um, it tells you pass it in, in a string and it gives you the date of the week that that date was. So here's a, here's a Stack Overflow uh, response to a question. So you can see how they use it to get um, the day of the week. This returns four, which uh, if you look down here, the it returns the day of the week as an integer where Monday is zero and Sunday is six. I don't know why they do that. Why didn't they start with Sunday being zero? I'm not sure, but you can see that four must be Friday, right? Because Friday is four, Saturday is five and Sunday is six. So apparently four is a Friday. And actually you can just have it tell you Friday. There's another example I think I put in here. Um, right here, you can see this is how you can get uh, an actual string of Monday or Friday or Saturday back out. You have to do this a little bit more work there to get it out. And then I have another this is a link to the documentation for that module here, if you want to look through there. Okay, so see if you can get the number of reviews written on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Ready, set, pause. Okay, welcome back. Let's take a look. Well, what I do here is from this module called datetime, I import the function called datetime and I re rename it or I give an alias of DT. So I can just write DT down here in my code. I get one counter for number of reviews on Wednesday, another counter on line four for number of reviews on Saturdays. By the way, you can, you can initialize these on one line if you want, like so. Okay, that's possible to do it that way in Python. But I'll just keep them separate just for pedagogical purposes for making it very transparent what's what's going on. Okay, so we open a connection like we did before. We loop over that connection, look, look at line by uh, line by line. And then we throw each line into a dictionary with that JSON function. And then we do if date time, strip time, review date. And then we're, we're gonna give it this um, bit of string that tells it how to um, interpret the date. So like, let's look down here at the console from our previous exercise. We have year dash, month dash, day, space, hour, colon, minute, colon, second. So that's why I'm telling it here. I'm saying, hey, the string I'm gonna pass in is a date and this is how I want you to interpret it. The first thing is a four digit year. Then I have a dash. Then I have a two uh, digit month, then a dash. And then I have a, a two digit day and then a space. And then I have a two digit hour, then a colon, two digit minute, colon, two digit second. So it internally, it'll convert it into a date object. So Python will think of it as a date, not just a string anymore. And then I say, give me the weekday I have date time, give me the weekday. And then I say, if that weekday number is equal to two, right? Remember that Monday is zero, Tuesday is one, and Wednesday therefore is two. Then I want you to add a one to the current count of the end wed counter. If you don't find, if that's not the case, if it's not a Wednesday, if that weekday integer doesn't evaluate to true or to two, 
Then see if it evaluates to five, right? Which should be Saturday. If that's the case, then add one to our Saturday counter. And if that's not the case, if neither of those uh, turn out to be true, then just continue to the next review, the next line. And then after you're done, just go ahead and print out how many reviews there are on each of those two days. Okay, so let's run the, the script. Take a little bit of time because it has to convert to a date object. Now it's finished. So it says the number of reviews written on Wednesday is 16,345. On Saturday, 19,285. That makes sense to me that there are more reviews written on Saturday than Wednesday. There's a lot of restaurants in this data set. And so you're gonna have more restaurant goers on Saturday than Wednesday, I think, I hypothesize. Right, that makes sense to me. If you wanna pause the video, look at my code, let me expose it here. There is the code that does the second practice exercise, or you can look at it in the solution file. All right, let's move on. Let's try one more here. A uh, third practice exercise, find the average number of stars for reviews written on Wednesdays and compare it to the average number of stars for reviews written on Saturdays. Perhaps there's you know, some effect from on the day, the day that a review, review is written on how, uh, you know, what star is given between one and five. And uh, if you wanna, this is a bonus thing. If you just wanna start with the main practice exercise here first, if you, if you know how to do that off the top of your head, you wanna add in uh, the bonus there, you can do so. Okay, so you're gonna need the statistics module to get, um, to get the average, the mean, right? We saw the statistics module back uh, in less than 8.1 on basic descriptive stats, right? Statistics module, there's a mean function. You just pass in a list of integers or yeah, it'll, they'll just be integers, right? Or even floats would work, but. So you'll use that module, statistics mean. Uh, so that is what you're working on for the next few minutes or more. Ready, set, give it a try. All right, welcome back. Let's take a look at how we could do this one. Okay, this is all the same. Uh, line four is new. From statistics, we're gonna import mean. So I, I don't know if I've explicitly pointed out that you can just import one function out of a module if you want. And the way you do that is you say from, keyword from, and then module name, import, and then function name. If you only wanna use one. Uh, if you're only gonna use one, you can do it that way. Okay, so here's stars, wed, stars, sat. Number, you know, we're gonna put in the number of stars. She's, yeah, we're gonna put in the star ranking uh, on Wednesdays and Saturdays into different lists there that uh, initialize on five and six. And then seven is the same thing from before, eight, same thing from before, looping over the file connection to get each line as a string that we, per, we convert it into a dictionary. And then we say, if, if the current review is written on Wednesday with the same logic we just saw in the previous practice, append to the star wed um, list the number of stars that the current review has, right? So that's indexed in, that's um, the value associated with the key stars, right? Up here on line 10, we looked at the value associated with the key date. Now we're looking at the value associated with the key stars of the current review. But if it's not a Wednesday, see if it's a Saturday using the same logic from the previous practice. If that's the case, then append to the star sat list, the current reviews number of stars. And if it's neither Wednesday nor Saturday, then just continue the next review. And we, you know, we really don't need that. that. That right there doesn't need to be, even need to be there, but just for like being very explicit with, with the logic, I'm gonna include it there. Um, and then once it's gone through all the reviews, right, mine the indentation here on 17 and 18 are indented at the same level as um, seven. 
which means it's going to go through all the reviews and it's going to close the connection to that JSON file. And then at this point on 17 and 18, it'll print out what it found. So let's run this and see what happens. Take a few seconds here. Okay, it took about five seconds or so. The average star ranking for reviews written on Wednesdays is 3.82, if I round up. On Saturday, 3.78. So slightly more positive or higher star values um, on Wednesdays than Saturdays. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't have any good interpretation on that, but interesting. Let me just point out real quick, that thing, that script took about five seconds, which is not long at all, but um, with really long scripts, you may want to put a progress report in. And one way you can do that is just simply have it count up. So I'm going to create a counter that's zero. And then right here, which I can I could actually put it right above where I would use it. So right before I jump into this for loop, I'm gonna put create a counter of zero. And then during each iteration of the for loop, I wanna increment that counter by one, which means increase it by one. And then I say, hey, if you divide the counter by, uh, let's say a thousand and you get a remainder of zero, then print out the counter for me. Cause I wanna see where you're at. Okay, so again, this what this means is this percent sign is the modulus operator, which means it'll divide count by a thousand and give you the remainder. And if that remainder is equal to zero, that is, it's exactly a thousand or two thousand or three thousand or four thousand, etc., then this will evaluate to true, right? And then it'll print out the number that it's on. This is kind of a a way of having a progress report. Let me just run the script again so you can see that working. Let me expose the console a bit more down here. Okay, here I go, I'm gonna run it, keyboard shortcut, enter, and I just deleted my stuff. Let's try that again. Oh, there it goes. It's going down here. And there, it finished. So as, I don't know if you saw, let me run it again. I'll narrate as it's going. Ready, set, go. Okay, it's going through, it's hit 20,000. It's going very quickly. I can't really narrate it, but you can see how quickly it's moving across my console going through the thousands and then done. Anyway, so that's kind of one way you can have a progress report on, on things that take a long time is just create a counter before going to a for loop and then increment the counter and divide it by some large number like a thousand or depending on how big the data set is and how long each iteration takes, um, divide it by some number and say if that, you know, if the remainder is equal to zero, then print out where you're at, print out that number so I can see where you're at. All right, so that is the last practice exercise. Um, the real difference from the previous one is just right here. I just depended the stars, the review stars this time. And then once it was all done with all the reviews, then I just got the mean of each of those lists. If you'd like to pause the video and look at that or look at my solution file, you can do so now. Did I do the bonus in the solution file? I don't think I did do the bonus. Um, if you like to see how to do that, um, all you would do here is you wouldn't even do any of this if stuff, right? You wouldn't you wouldn't worry about the if stuff at all. You would just append every last star ranking. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me just use. Let me just rename this to be very explicit. I'll just call it all days there. And then I'm gonna append to all days here. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm during, when I go, when I look at every review, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the uh, number of stars up into this list, right? I'm gonna append it to the list. And then at the end, um, the average number of stars for reviews written on any day or on all days is, I want to find the mean of the stars uh, all days. This is one way to do this. And the average uh, number of stars is 3.78. OK.
Okay, so that's the way you can do this. Let me just kind of get rid of all this other stuff that's visually cluttery. Maybe I'll get rid of this up here and get rid of the, the progress report just to make it even a little bit cleaner. Okay, so at, when I'm looking at every review, I just, I, uh, I add to that list the number of stars that that current review has and then get the mean at the end. So that's how you could do that little bonus uh, activity. I don't need, need that module anymore. I'm gonna pause the video, make it work on your end. You could do so now if you like. All right, so that brings us to an end of lesson 13.1 on analyzing Yelp reviews. And at this point, you should be able to do that if you need to review the video or look at my solution file and really analyze it and really get this down, that'd be a good idea. Okay, we'll see you next time. Have a good day.